Hey guys, my name's Eugene, and today we're going to put together a small form factor HTPC uh, gaming machine that's going to go in the living room, play all your favorite stuff, watch all your movies, turn it on, and turn it off with no fuss at all, just like a console. By the end of the video, you should know how to put this thing together and have your own console killer in the living room. Uh, but first, let's take a detailed look at each of the components. So in choosing your components, the first thing you have to think about, obviously, is what you need them for. And I had a pretty clear vision of what I wanted this HTPC to do. First, I wanted to be able to play The Witcher 3 and all the newest games that I've been into recently uh, at 1080p on my projector without any problems. Uh, and by problems, I don't just mean frame rate issues, but I mean compatibility issues, because um, we want this to be a simple home appliance. Uh, second, I want this to be prepared to stream from my gaming PC in the future, and also stream from my, um, my network attached storage, my NAS. The last time the task force in order to do that, you need uh, a few specific components as well. Uh, this one is pretty specific, but I wanted to have it capture TV as it comes in through my uh, cable, and that means a cable card compatible TV tuner. So I got one of those. And last but not least, I didn't want to go too overboard with the components inside because each component adds noise and since this thing is in the living room, you want it to be quiet. So with that in mind, let's take a look at what we're putting in here. So first, I got an Intel Core i7-4790K. This is from the Haswell Refresh, the Devil's Canyon line of processors. Um, the K means that the processor multiplier is unlocked which makes for better overclocking, and that's great for gaming, although I don't know how much of that I'll be doing uh, since we do want this to be a quiet build, and that means you don't want those fans uh, spinning too loudly. This is the first thing that people are going to say is overkill, but remember, I'm thinking about the future, I'm thinking about streaming, uh, and for that reason, I wanted a nice gaming processor in there. Uh, so next, you've got the motherboard. And for that, we picked the Intel Z97 Gaming 5 from MSI. This one seemed to strike a balance between um, performance and price. Uh, I think it's at a pretty good point for both. Uh, it has great onboard audio, which is important for obviously something that's going in your home theater. Um, and it has, this is where I started thinking about aesthetics, so um, red and black seems to be kind of the color combination of the day. Um, and to be consistent with that, we went with this MSI product. Next is probably the most important part of any gaming build, which is the video card. Um, and for mine, I picked, first of all, starting with the reference part, it's the GTX 980, um, which is NVIDIA's top of the line uh, single core GPU, um, not counting the Titan X, which if you ask me, uh, is a product that is mainly there to have something at the very highest price point. The 980, uh, is going to give you substantially the same performance, uh, if a little worse, but certainly a 1080p is going to be doing everything we need it to. Um, and then next, the other PCIe peripheral that we have is the uh, Citon Infinity V6. Uh, it's a TV tuner, so basically you're plugging your cable in um, and it's capturing that data and interpreting it uh, and acts as essentially the cable box that you get from your cable provider. Um, and into that goes a cable card, which you do have to get from the provider. Um, and that allows it to unscramble the cable and watch all your channels on your computer. Um, moving along, we have the CPU cooler. So actually, I wasn't sure which one I wanted to go with. Um, so I ordered two, and we'll just see which one looks better. First is the Raijin Tech uh, Palace. They're both low profile coolers, which is important here because as you'll see later when we go into the case, it's pretty small, so you can't have one of those big tower style coolers like the Hyper 212, which is so popular, or some of the big Noctua towers. Um, both of these have great reviews. Uh, they'll get the job done, especially at stock clocks, and um, will certainly keep things quiet in there. Some people would just go with the stock uh, Intel cooler that comes with the processor. I think that those tend to be a little loud, and the character of the noise is kind of whiny. Um, not something that you want to have in the background while you're trying to watch a movie or play a game or what have you. Um, power supply is also going to be important because that tends to be kind of a loud component um, and you want to have one that is able to power down the fans when the system is idling. 
So the EVGA uh, 750 G2 is able to do that. Um, I, I happened to find one refurbished, so I got a great deal on it. Um, I don't think that I'm going to need all 750 watts for this system. Uh, however, if you're using less of that, um, less of the maximum capacity, you're going to have uh, lower. You're, you're going to be at the sweet spot on the curve there um, in terms of noise and uh, performance. I also got some custom cables for it, so it'll look nice in there. We have some case fans here and here. Um, here is the RAM. This is a little bit of overkill as well, uh, also red and black. Um, this is 16 gigabytes of uh, G-Skill RAM. Um, I got it at a higher speed uh, than what you'll normally find, which is like, you know, 1600 or uh, this one is 2400. Um, that's really not going to affect performance that much, but there happened to be a good deal. And sometimes uh, when you find something that's the right color um, and there's a good deal on it, even if it's maybe a little overkill or not exactly what you need for the system, you can still go for it. Um, in terms of the system storage, the, uh, this is the first time I'm working with an M.2 drive, which I'm really excited about. Um, I was looking specifically for a board that has that, and this one does. So it plugs right into the board, so it's kind of discreet. Um, it's super fast, and this is where my operating system will go. And for all my games and media and stuff, I got a, a Seagate 4 terabyte drive. Uh, and that'll be the only hard drive in the system. I also have a Blu-ray player. Since this is going in the media center, you want to be able to play Blu-rays on it. Uh, and then to control this thing, I have a Logitech Harmony One remote and a uh, Xbox 360 controller. Sometimes you just got to go with the classic. With these, keep in mind you need a receiver to use them on a PC. Uh, I happen to have one already, um, but some people will just think that it can connect uh, through Bluetooth or something like that. They can't. So you need a Microsoft receiver. Um, so those are all the main components. Now let's take a look at the case. So now let's take a closer look at really the most important uh, aspect of an HTPC build, uh, the beer. That was just a joke. Take. Sorry. <laughs> now let's take a closer look at really the most important aspect of an HTPC build, which is the case. Um, and that's because, remember, this thing is going to be out in full view. Um, and it's also going to be fitting into an entertainment center that's kind of size limited. Uh, a lot of the time when you're thinking about a gaming build, the case is really an afterthought because, um, frankly, you can get some really great cheap ones that all your parts will fit into. But here, it's on full display. So I chose the Silverstone Grandia GD09, um, and I picked that one for a couple reasons. First, I did not want it to be uh, mini ITX only. Now that's the size of the motherboard, right? And a mini ITX only fits one uh, PCIe card. Uh, I knew I wanted to have two because I wanted both the video card and the cable capture card. So that's one thing uh, that compelled me to pick something that's maybe a little bit larger or roomier that can fit a micro ATX or even full size ATX, which this one can do. Second, I wanted to have front facing USB slots. This one does. Um, mainly that's because I'm going to be plugging in a uh, remote receiver device, a Flerk, which I'll show you guys later. And also because uh, if I'm using this thing to play retro games on, I want to be able to use one of those uh, USB SNES controllers or a USB Sega controller. Um, and so you want to have that accessible out in front. Uh, next, I did want to have an optical drive as well. Um, so a lot of uh, newer HTPC cases are skipping out on that because frankly it's not that necessary for a gaming build anymore. Uh, Steam brings everything to you digitally, right? But if you're using it to watch movies as well, um, or even listen to CDs, which maybe I might do, uh, this can do that too. So uh, I'm opening up the motherboard now. I uh, just got this so you can get that new motherboard smell. Comes in classic. Uh, anti-static packaging and one thing that's really handy is as Linus always says the motherboard box makes a great non-conductive test bench that you can build everything on um, and so we'll be using it in that for that purpose we'll put the motherboard aside for a sec uh, it looks great 
Uh, we'll take a closer look in a second. Let's see what else is in here. CD, this has all your drivers. You're gonna wanna keep that handy to install later. Um, looks like there are some uh, labels here with some handy instructions. Uh, I think what they want you to do with these is uh, stick them onto your SATA cables to identify which drive is what. Uh, little brochure for MSI professional gaming or something. This is garbage. Quick installation guide and user guide. Um, I'm a fan of manuals. I think that you should always keep these things around. Um, and then this, this is a door hanger that says uh, gaming motherboard, I'm sorry, busy gaming. Frankly, I don't think this will work in any situation that you might ever use it in. If it's your parents, I'm, I don't think they're gonna respect this door hanger really. Kinda cute though. What else do we have? Um, the I.O. shield, we'll reckon with that later. Um, a couple SATA cables, looks like one uh, straight one and one 90 degree one. That'll be handy. Uh, remember, I only have two SATA devices in this case. Um, this looks like a four pin Molex to uh, a four pin fan connector. So maybe for connecting your case fans to the motherboard's fan headers. Get into that a little later as we talk about thermal design. Um, also a case badge or just a regular badge. Um, and uh, some more headers that it looks like it's for the uh, case connectors and an SLI bridge. Uh, won't need it this time, but we'll keep it just in case. So reassemble your motherboard box and you'll notice magically it's the size of the motherboard. So you can go ahead and open that up and put it right on top of the box as you put in your components. First, uh, we're gonna wanna open up our processor. So you can see like most of the box is this stock cooler, which we won't be using. So you just kind of slide the CPU out. And this is it. So you lift the retention arm, move that, and then you'll see these little notches there. You want to line them up with the corresponding notches in the place where you seat the CPU. Close that gingerly, and then push the retention arm down. It's going to take quite a bit of force, so um, just even if you think you're kind of pushing it, you really, you really have to push it in this case. So next we're going to seat the RAM because we want to make sure that the CPU cooler um, is not too low so that it blocks the first RAM slot. And to do that, you have to open these clips and just push on the RAM until the clips close. So now you'll notice they're closed. Um, and sometimes you'll just want to, uh, if you have only two sticks of RAM, you put them in just the first and third RAM uh, slot but since I have four identical sticks, and it's actually really important that you have identical ones in order for them all to perform optimally, um, you need to put them in all four. There we go. Um, now, the other thing that I mentioned is that I have um, an M.2 drive to use for the system storage, um, and on this motherboard, that goes into this slot right here. So I'll want to um, put it in now, again, because you don't want it interfering with the cooler, which will sit on top of the CPU. Fit it in there. And then, ah! This is a perfect use for my eyeglasses screwdriver. You'll notice that these screws are very small. Checks out. Okay, CPU cooler time. So what we're doing now is mounting the CPU cooler. We decided to go with the Raijin Tech one. Um, 
this is where all of the instructions are going to be very specific to the cooler that you're using. So you'll want to make sure to follow those. In this case, um, they said first to line up these holes, which I've done, and to attach the threaded screws to the motherboard. Lay it down gently. It's not a very elegant process. And then next, you use these plastic guys to hold these in place. So the orthodoxy with like tightening these things is with computers, you never want to over tighten anything because there's always a chance that you'll damage the components themselves by over tightening. So I mean, definitely just use your hands, especially when it comes to CPU uh, related components. And once it's in place, you'll, you'll kind of know. The instructions next say to add in mounting clips. There are different sized ones for uh, Intel and AMD. The Intel ones are these long skinny ones. So, a lot of people say a rice-sized amount. I like to put basically a little X, a little modest X on the CPU. And what this is doing is basically creating a substrate for the, um, for the CPU cooler to connect to the CPU itself um, so that there's no air in between and that it's so that it's absorbing all of the heat hmm. Rats So seem to have run into our first issue here the Clips here are attached so that the CPU cooler is oriented this way, meaning it comes into contact with the RAM, which is, if you can recall, exactly what we didn't want. So I'm going to try and see if these can be oriented the other way. I'm not sure if this is a perfect square on this platform or not. Um, if it is, then we should be able to do it. If not, uh, we're going to have to think of something else. So basically what happened was I had oriented the, uh, C the CPU cooler brackets the wrong way such that it would have to be placed over the RAM. As I mentioned, every single CPU cooler mechanism is very idiosyncratic, um, meaning the mechanism to put them into place. Um, they're also all universally terrible. Uh, this one is really no exception. Um, so, uh, yeah, I had a heck of a time um, putting it in there because you have to have basically four free-floating metal pieces that all are aligned perfectly as, um, it's kind of like uh, landing the, um, like the lunar module or something. Uh, maybe not as complicated, but I don't know. So the last part is that you want to attach the fan. Um, which, as you can see here, uh, they put a nice sleeved cover, um, which is great. Uh, you want to attach that to the CPU cooler. Okay, time to put them in the case. 
All right, so now I've got the motherboard here onto which we've installed uh, the RAM, the CPU, the CPU cooler, which was a pain in the ass, and also the M.2 uh, drive. So what we're gonna do next is put it into the case. So I've taken off the top of the case. Um, it was secured just by two of these screws. Um, and next is a couple other parts you wanna take out as well. So let's do that. So I was about to put in the motherboard when I realized that um, one of the things that you really need to do when building a smaller form factor system is look at the instruction manual. Very important because with these cases, oftentimes there'll be a specific order that they want you to put stuff in because it's going to be a very tight fit in there. And as soon as I did that, I noticed that they want you to put in the PSU first, which makes sense given the real estate that it takes up in the case. So one thing that they mentioned is you can use a smaller PSU. Uh, Silverstone themselves actually make their uh, Strider series, which are shorter PSUs that are about um, uh, maybe like 40 millimeters shorter than this one. Um, and that'll allow you to use the whole 120 millimeter fan here. This one kind of blocks that, so that's why we're gonna use an 80 millimeter fan that uses those holes. Um, but for now, I'm gonna screw this guy into place. Um, so again, I mentioned I'm going with the 750 mainly because you want the capacity to be able to overclock or even expand in the future. I mean, I'm using a full-size ATX motherboard here, so that means I can use um, an, even an SLI video configuration, so two video cards, drop another 980 in there if I need to. Um, so luckily this does come with these nice black screws. I'm gonna put them in back here. The next thing we'll wanna do is put the motherboard's I.O. shield into place. That's this guy here. Pretty easy to snap it in. Obviously make sure it's at the correct orientation. Put the motherboard in, um, and when you do that, just make sure that it aligns with the standoffs on the lower part of the tray. So that's these guys right here. So when you fit the motherboard, you're going to want to make sure that these um, ports in the back of the motherboard fit right out uh, snugly with the ports that you set up in the shield. And once they have, uh, the standoff should align as well, and that's how you know that it's in place. So I've put in the motherboard now. I haven't installed all the screws yet, but I think that now, given that two of the 120 millimeter um, Noctua fans are going on this side, I'm gonna put them in now just to make sure that there are no fit issues. So this case has some really awesome dust filters. I'll take those off first. So what I've done now is put in these three case fans. There's also actually a place for two 80 millimeter fans back here, but as you can see, um, in this case, uh, case being used in two different ways, they're being blocked by the uh, CPU cooler. But you know what, this case seems to have plenty of airflow, and I don't think that we're gonna need those other two. So in terms of the thermal design here, um, I have uh, put these two to intake air and this one to exhaust. So first thing you'll notice is probably that there's a lot more intake going on here than there is exhaust and that's to create positive pressure in the case. And what that means is that this case is gonna be full of air, not that much coming out, which means that all the other ventilation holes like these, this one back here, uh, those aren't going to be trying to suck in air to equalize the flow, which means not a lot of dust coming in. So uh, positive pressure is just a little trick that system builders use to keep the case free of dust. So the next thing we want to do is um, think about where we want to put the uh, power cables. So this motherboard has a power uh, cable that needs to connect here and here. So we should think about connecting them to the PSU.
So the next thing we want to do is pre-connect our SATA cables. And I read in the manual that on this motherboard, when you're connecting the M.2 drives, um, the SATA ports 5 and 6 are uh, disconnected. So we want to make sure to use uh, 1 and 2, and that's what, what uh, will connect our hard drive and our optical drive to. So the, um, the motherboard itself actually came with these cables. And another thing that we want to think about is these guys. So these are the headers from the front of the case. And um, they're very annoying to deal with typically, but you want to make sure that they're plugged in correctly. Um, so this one is USB 3. Um, and on this motherboard, that goes here. All right. And this one is HD audio. I'm not going to be using the front audio, and I'd rather not have cables cluttering the front of my motherboard to restrict airflow, so I'm actually just going to leave this one unplugged. Um, that's right, you can do that. Let's get this USB one out of the way as well. So currently plugging in um, the front panel connectors, this is what allows you to power on the system, it's got the hard drive LED, um, the reset switch, so the motherboard manual kind of tells you where those go. In this case they go here. So I plugged all those in. This is something I actually really like to sleeve um, when I'm working on like a full tower case, but here with an HTPC it's really the outside that matters a lot more than the inside. Um, so as long as your outside's looking good, nothing else is really all that important. Um, so I'm satisfied with this. It's not the most beautiful and elegant thing in the world, but it should do the trick. So now let's think about how to train these cables, get them out of the way, and also, ugh, especially these ugly guys, and complete the final parts of the build. Okay. Um, I'm going to be plugging in the SATA devices. So these are the cables that came with uh, the motherboard. And the first one is going to be the hard drive cable. Uh, if you remember the hard drive I plugged in right down there, um, you'll want to check the orientation of this guy. And the nice thing about SATA is that it just basically snaps right in. You'll hear a very pleasant and satisfying click. Um, and here on this motherboard, SATA is right here. And then, even though I don't have a second SATA device plugged in right now, I know that I'm going to be using that um, Blu-ray drive, so I'm going to plug it in as well. Okay. So, next thing we're going to do is the video card. So before plugging in the video card or any of the PCI connectors, you want to take out this back plate. Very nice. This is the part that goes into the PCIe slot. Looks like it's going to be a two slot one, so let me remove that second back plate as well. Once again, this demonstrates the wisdom of plugging in your components step by step because, and thinking and you know, planning out what's going to go in where because a lot of the time you just don't know what's going to be in the way and what you're going to have to take out. So here it looks like actually that first bracket can come back in this guy, but the second one needs to come out just because of how the spacing here works. So let's go ahead and do that. 
well seated. We heard that arm snap into place. And then you want to take those screws that were holding the uh, brackets in the back in place and put them back into the holes where they were. No! Now that the graphics card is in and secured in the back, you want to connect the power cables. And now that that's in place, uh, we may as well think about connecting the hard drive and the cable for the uh, SATA optical drive. This thing is starting to get filled up pretty quickly. Very thankful to have all this room in the front of the case. Oh, this pretty good. So the last PCI Express device to go in, well, second and last, is the cable card, or the cable, the TV tuner, which will house a cable card. And that will go right here. Wonderful. It's a lot easier for some reason. So, as you can see, uh, I've connected the power cables here, um, installed that uh, the cable card into the uh, TV tuner, and um, then I started putting the case back together one by one. So first in that optical drive bracket, I put our Blu-ray drive, uh, then I put in this middle um, uh, arm that kind of braces the drive, put the drive uh, holder back into place, and uh, now I'm about to plug in the SATA power cables. And there's that. So, first of all, I'd have to say that for a, um, an HTPC build, this thing looks pretty good inside. Um, obviously having the nice sleeved cables helps, but the cables are managed well. These guys are kind of ugly, but uh, everything works. So the only thing I'm concerned about right now is these are protruding a little bit. Um, I'm not sure if the roof will fit, but might as well give it a whirl. Moment of truth. How about that? Perfect fit. So yeah, let's screw this guy back in and see if it turns on. It never turns on. So this is the second boot. First boot was not so good. But we're ready to um, plug in uh, plug in our Windows disk and reboot this thing uh, and install Windows.